How you going? Welcome back to another Spilt Milk Show episode. Today, we're going to be talking about a certified hood classic. Yes, that is right. A street gangster game. Club Penguin, of course. Now, Club Penguin was essentially an MMORPG where you play as a penguin, waddled around, played many games, and talked to other penguins. Now, if you didn't play Club Penguin when you were a kid, I honestly feel sorry for you because this game truly molded me into the person I am today. No exaggeration. And if you did play it, well, you already know what the fuck's going on. So, sit back, relax, and here is pretty much Club Penguin. Club Penguin was essentially an MMORPG where you played as a penguin, waddled around, played many games, and talked to other people. On the surface, that's really what it was, but truly, just like most games we played growing up, Neopets, RuneScape, any one of those, it was much more than that. It was such an influential game to me because it gave me a true sense of what being part of a community felt like. Before Club Penguin was even thought of, a Flash 4 web-based game created by Lance Preve? Sure, we'll go with that. Was being developed in his spare time. That game was called Snow Blasters. Now, Snow Blasters was never actually released to the public, but you can play a fan-made version of the game online, of course, just like any goddamn thing in this world. You can find it on the internet. With all of these crazy ideas running through Lance's head, he soon created a new game, Experimental Penguins. This game, Experimental Penguins, was essentially the first Club Penguin, if you want me to be honest. It was released by Rocket Snow Games in July of 2000, but ultimately went offline a year later. RIP Experimental Penguins. Now, Penguin Chat was the first installment of the Penguin Chat series, released shortly after Experimental Penguins. This version was essentially a chat room where you would walk around, go into igloos, and throw snowballs at each other, all while being, of course, a virtual penguin. About two years after Penguin Chat released, Penguin Chat 2 came out. Now in this version, instead of spawning you in the area with the igloo and the pole and the snow area, you were instead spawned in the town, with many familiar places that we know and love, such as the coffee shop, the nightclub, and the boiler room. This version of Penguin Chat also contained mini-games, like Ballistic Biscuit, which was later turned into Hydro Hopper. Lance Priebe, as well as co-workers Lane Merrifield and Dave Crisco, started to formulate the Club Penguin concept after they couldn't find any sort of social platform that was safe for their children, so they created a spin-off company called New Horizon Interactive. On the 22nd of August 2005, Club Penguin launched for 15,000 beta testers to work out all of the bugs. But on October 24th, 2005, the first version of Club Penguin went live to the public. Now, I don't know if I particularly remember when I started my Club Penguin adventure, like what year? But if you were like me, obviously everyone started out without a membership. So getting clothes or any sort of non-member item was such a bitch. That's why one of the best things about Club Penguin, at least in my opinion, were the seasonal events. Like any good MMORPG, seasonal events are some of the funnest times in the game. The Halloween and Christmas events or even the summer kickoff party. Now, usually completing a series of tasks having to do with the event resulted in getting a free event related item. Things ranging from a pumpkin basket from Halloween to a marshmallow stick from the Camp Penguin event. It was just good fun the whole community could have together. Later on in the day, you would see everyone with their event item, and it was really just such a good community feel. Now, like I said, coming by free items was not easy. There were only so many that you could get. Like the tour guide hat, that was a pretty ballin' fucking item, I'm not even gonna lie. I remember the first time logging on after I got a membership. It was like unlocking all the stuff I had ever wanted. Being able to go in stores and buy whatever I wanted was such a surreal feeling. It wasn't long before I lost all of my money buying literally everything. Well, of course going broke in Club Penguin leads you to the lowest of the low. That is right. I'm talking about using a Club Penguin moneymaker. 
Now, so many games back in the day had either money makers or free membership hacking things that you could download, enter your account information, and hopefully not destroy your computer or leak all your information. Nine times out of ten, chances are that it's not going to work and you're not going to get anything from these bullshit money makers. But, believe it or not, I downloaded one and entered my information and my computer didn't get destroyed and my information didn't get leaked, at least that I know of, and it actually worked. Yes, that's right. I downloaded this money maker, entered my information, put in however many coins I wanted, then I pressed confirm, logged into Club Penguin, played one game, and it would give you all of the coins that you had entered. With my newly gained money and membership, I could finally be one of those people who had an insane igloo and throw massive fucking ragers at it. I don't know if you guys remember everyone just constantly flooding the town area and spamming party at my igloo, but I was soon to be one of those people, and honestly, the parties at people's igloos weren't much other than a few penguins dancing and a few others trying to converse with each other. They were far from parties, but nonetheless, it was just fun to show off your igloo if you had it like that. I have to say though, if you remember the plaza when it looked like this, you deserve a you're old as fuck discount because I remember hopping on every day when they were adding the stage and wondering what the construction site was going to turn into. And one day, they finally finished it. The day the stage was finished, I remember getting off of school, logging on, and walking into the stage area only to see just pure chaos of people pulling the levers and pressing the buttons to control everything on stage, while there were just groups of penguins on the stage putting in costumes and trying to read the lines from the plays just completely out of order. And I also find it crazy that the stage is the spot that the dojo was supposed to be in, and frankly I'm so glad they didn't do that because it would have just looked so out of place and weird. When the dojo first opened up, I found it to be such an awesome, cool, fun, and competitive area. Like, Karjutsu was easily the most competitive thing on Club Penguin, and I would seriously fuck everybody up at it. One thing I had wish I did collect, though, were the actual Karjutsu cards they released, like, in real life. <laughs> and honestly, I probably would have never played with them, but I would have collected them, like I do with all of my millions of fucking Pokemon cards. So, I'm not saying Karjutsu was my favorite game. It was a good game, don't get me wrong, but I mean, best game in Club Penguin? gotta be between Kart Surfer and Pizzatron 3000. I, I, don't, I don't think the other one competes with it, but if I had to give it to any of them, it would have to be Kart Surfer, and that's only for the sole fact that it gave me the most amount of coins in the shortest amount of time, but gameplay-wise, I, I would definitely give it to Pizzatron 3000. But both of them just gave me so much nostalgia, honestly, playing them whenever I went back as an adult. But let's be real. If we're talking about nostalgia here, okay, the most nostalgic place in this game was indefinitely the pizza parlor. Ah, the glorious pizza parlor, where you would go on your first penguin love date, have your first job tossing a pizza, or even have your first music gig as a pianist. The very fancy and chill vibe the music set for the whole parlor was impeccable to say the least. One of my favorite things to do at the pizza parlor was pretending to make pizzas for people standing by their table. You just put on the pizza apron allowing you to use the emote of you tossing up some pizza. Oh, what a naive child I was working virtually for fun. But honestly, I would give pretty much anything to go back to that moment. So in terms of nostalgia, yes, the pizza parlor takes the cake, for sure. But no place really compared to the legendary iceberg. No, not that kind of fucking iceberg, okay? That's, that's not what this video is. The iceberg in Club Penguin was sort of this folk tale that if enough penguins stood on one side, eventually it would flip. I remember looking up so many different times how to flip the iceberg or just pictures of it being flipped. It was just like a myth. 
Now, nobody really had any proof that it could flip or that it had been flipped for them to witness it, but as it would be partially forgotten, there would be hints that the developers would drop in the game, like Ask Antarctic articles, that's a fucking tongue twister if I've ever seen one, and even paintings at the Puffle Hotel dining room during the 2014 Halloween party. And in the lodge attic after renovations in 2015 of the iceberg clearly being tipped over, the one mystery only stayed a mystery until one grim day. On January 30th, 2017, Disney announced that Club Penguin would be shutting down on March 29th to make way for their new mobile game, Club Penguin Island. Now, if you were like me and pretty much the entire player base of Club Penguin, I'm sure you were furious to hear this news. Not only did this new game look like hot shit, but a piece of my childhood was being ripped away from me forever. Of course, in Club Penguin style, the team had announced the Waddle On Party. The date started, I believe the day after they made the announcement and lasted till the very last day the servers were up. While some people were trying to focus on getting the fastest speedrun for getting banned, a majority of people were coming back to actually reminisce in the game and remember all of the good times they had, like myself. Now, coming back to reminisce in the game, I'm sure you were bouncing around from every and any spot in Club Penguin, trying to remember the memories you had there. And if you did, I'm sure you ended up at the iceberg at some point. And I'm also sure you saw a bunch of penguins trying to flip it one last time, hoping that they could maybe flip it this time. Well, a little surprise, the developers actually made it possible during the Waddle On party. Now, in order to finally tip this damn iceberg, at least five people in the room had to be wearing blue, walking a blue puffle, dancing, and wearing a hard hat. When it tipped over onto the other side, a dance floor was revealed, with a little plaque that read, Together, we can build an island, create a community, change the world, and even tip an iceberg. Waddle On. As the final days approached, it was just pure wild chaos, like a young gross gore playing RuneScape not giving a fuck. And on the final day of Club Penguin servers being up, the developers gave every penguin a membership for free. Bit of a pity gift, if you ask me. The final server shut down on March 30th, 2017 at 12.01 AM PDT. Watching the final moments of Club Penguin, you can really see how chaotic, but also how passionate so many people were about this game and community. A moment of silence for Club Penguin. In the darkness, there is supposed to be light. Club Penguin Island was supposed to be that light for everyone to look forward to, but frankly, it just didn't do the job a lot of people were looking for. Now, I don't have much grounds to speak on this game because, frankly, I only gave it one chance, but I think that's all it deserved. I downloaded Club Penguin Island, and once I did, I got into the game and was instantly disappointed. Not only did I not get a speck of the same feel I used to play when playing Club Penguin, but the art and the graphics were just dog shit. And it didn't last long, only about a year after the release of the game, it was ultimately shut down, and rightfully so. I understand them wanting to switch over to the likeness of something mobile so more people could play it, but why not just make the original game into a mobile version? Because making a whole new game that is dog shit compared to the one you had just shut down is the worst possible thing you could have done. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you stuck all the way to the end, you are a fucking real one and you deserve a hug or nothing fuck you but seriously thank you so much for watching i can't wait for the next one i will see you there and don't forget to waddle on